Debbie Blatt and welcome to my studio. So glad you could be here with me today. Today's project is a really fun project. I think you're going to really enjoy it. It's this sweet little pillow. And it's, I was able to finish this in an afternoon quite easily. And I mean, I could have probably whipped out a couple of more. It's just a matter of planning ahead of time if you're going to do more than one. But this is a really fun project. It's very organic. I don't have any real finished edges here. I like to leave all my edges raw. And I, um, just again on my flowers the edges are raw on my little vase all of it's just applique on here and what I use um, for this actual pillow is I use a canvas material now if you don't have a canvas material you can use muslin or broadcloth but let me tell you you will really enjoy this fabric once you get working with it and it's such an easy fabric to use it's literally just a drop cloth you can get these online I got this particular one at Amazon it's 9 foot by 12 foot and I know that I could get it at Home Depot or Lowe's as well. And it's basically just a painter's drop cloth. I love this because it's it's really durable. It's a solid fabric. Um, you know, you're going to be taking your pillows off and on your bed or off and on, off and on the couch. And so you want something that's going to hold up. And this really does hold up well. And it's fun to sew onto because of its density. So um, for this project, I am going to use this. And I would really recommend that you run out and buy one of these and just make a few things with it. You'd really enjoy it. So you're going to need one of these or, like I say, some muslin or broadcloth. Um, also, this pillow is 16 by 16. And so what I went and did is I went and got me a 16 by 16 pillow insert. I got this at Joann's. Um, I know that you can get them online. I just grabbed, a six, I think it was a six pack at Joann's, and I used my 50% off coupon to purchase the full six pack. Um, if you don't have the pillow insert, you can use your polyfill. And the thing about these projects are so much fun is you don't have to do a 16 by 16. You can do a pillow that's half this size. And, um, you know, if, it, if you don't have a standard pillow insert, all you do is stuff it with the polyfill and you've made your own custom pillow. So, anyway, you're going to need some polyfill or pillow insert. Set that there. Let's take this broad cloth off of here. Drop cloth. And the first thing you're going to want to do is get your workspace area ready and then get some scraps out. You're going to need some scraps because these pieces on here are just scraps of fabric that I had and I just trimmed them down. There's really no rhyme or reason. It was just a matter of how much I wanted on there. Down here on the bottom I put stop and smell the flowers. Um, you know this is a very beginner's project so you can take it up a notch and do some freeform sewing on it if you want or you can just keep it simple which is putting on the flowers and you know not worrying about the wording. I mean it's just an adorable little pillow and so um, let's go ahead and I'll We'll get started on this and show you what we're going to need first to get going. Okay, the first thing you're going to want to do is get your canvas drop cloth and you're going to want to cut a piece that is 18 inches across by 18 inches long. So you want to go 18 by inch, 18, a square piece. And um, while you're at it, you're going to want to cut another piece as well because this is the front. This is where I'm going to put my, my flower and my vase. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it over to my sewing machine because this does fray very well as you can see right here it's, it, it just it frays beautifully and you, at the end of the project you're going to grab these end, ends and actually fray some more off so what you're going to want to do is go over to your sewing machine and you're going to want to zigzag around the edge and I just did about a quarter of an inch in quarter of an inch to a half an inch in and I just did a zigzag stitch all the way around. I did the zigzag and then what I did is I came back because this is my signature move. I love it. So I just took a straight stitch and I just kind of meandered it through there. I just went a little wavy and I did that twice. I went all the way around it once and then I did it again. And so if you can see that right there, um, you can see that I've got the zigzags and then some straight stitching in there. And that's what you're going to want to do to your canvas. And you get, want to get this and then I want you to take it, once you get this sewn on, go ahead and take it over and press it because you want no wrinkles on this canvas because you're going to be wanting to, we're going to be putting on some fabric. And what I use to hold my fabric into place on my pillow is I used um, the Underwonder. And you know, you don't have to have Underwonder. You can use simply a, a glue stick 
because what you do is you take the glue stick and you put it on a couple of dabs on the corner and you place it on the fabric and it holds it in place while you're doing your stitching. Now I just happen to have some underwonder and that is just a thin um, adhesive and it's a mesh adhesive and it adheres to the fabric that you're putting down on the canvas and what it, you know you just press it with a hot iron on a steam level and it will hold it in place and then you can come back and do your stitching. So either way you can do it with your underwinder or else you can do it with like I said a simple glue stick. Um, also now once you get this done cut it out take it over and sew on it and what you're going to want to do because this is the front you're going to want to have a back piece too and this is the back of the pillow and I don't I have a finished edge here on the pillow and I just did that simply by taking a piece of the canvas and I went over to my ironing board and I folded it under about a quarter of an inch and I pressed it. And so it gave me a nice finished edge and then I just pinned the corners to hold it down and this is going to be my pillow back and it's going to go on just like that and then we're going to sew around the edges and attach it actually to the pillow. Now go ahead and start your cutting and this particular piece, this piece right here is 16 and a half by 16 and a half and then the other piece is 18 by 18. So go ahead and get your canvas and cut out your 18 by 18 piece and your 16 and a half by 16 and a half piece. Alrighty. Okay, now that you've got these cut out, I want you to go over to the sewing machine and do the zigzag stitch and the straight stitch and kind of give it a little bit of waviness. What this is going to do is it's going to give you a little bit of decorative look on the edge, but it's also going to stop this from fraying in too far. I mean, it's going to fray into at least the zigzag, um, but, you know, but it won't continue to fray and come undone into your actual pillow body. So go ahead and get that sewing done and press under your quarter of an inch on your 16 by 16 piece and then we'll get started on this. Okay, so what I've done, I've gone ahead and done my decorative stitch earlier and then I've pressed out my, my canvas and working with this canvas it presses so beautifully and you want to have a nice flat surface and so what I want to do is I've gone ahead and got this ready and then I did press, like I said, my quarter of an inch under and I'm going to lay this on top of here and I'm just going to lightly mark the edges so I kind of know where I'm going with my with my uh, my actual picture of my flowers. So I'm going to mark my edges so I can see them on this and then I'm going to take this off set it back over here and so I've got my edges marked and I've just kind of roughly filled in where I want this to lay. Let me grab my pencil again. And so I've just marked this and this just is, just do it lightly. You know, you're going to be covering it with some fabric, but you're going to use this as your guideline. And like I say, you want, you know, your good two inch around here because this is 18 and remember this is 16 and a half but you've folded in your quarter inch, so now you're at 16 by 16, and this is where your pillow is going to go right here. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started with this. So what I did on mine, we'll go ahead and take a look at this one really quickly. If you can see this one, I've put like a little border down here and a border up the side. So that's what we're going to put on first. So what I did is I had some blue strips, and basically I cut these 16 by 16 so that it fits right there. And all I did, again, let me show you on this, is I went over and I zigzagged the edge on this one because it was a scrap that I had from a different, a different project. So I want you to lay that down, your 16 to 16 there, and lay this one on top of it. Go ahead and pin it in place. Let me grab a couple of pins here. Just remember, I'm looking at this and I, I'm off just a titch. I want to keep it in that guideline that I kind of wrote earlier. And so I'm going to just pin those on there really quickly. And again, keeping that within the guideline. And remember, like I said, this is really organic. So it's not, 
anything to fret over if it's not straight. So now what you're going to do is you're going to take this over. You basically have just put on the edge. And like I said, you can use any kind of fabric scrap or you don't even have to put this on here. You can just put your flowers on and that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this back over and I'm going to straight stitch all the way around this L shape. And then I'm going to zigzag as well all the way around it. I'm not going to worry about the raw edges because if you can see on this one, that's what I've done. I've just zigzagged and straight stitched around here. So go ahead, go over to your machine, do your sewing, and then come on back and we'll start adding on the rest of the applique. Okay, so what I've done is I've gone ahead and sewn that on. I'm going to turn it my way and then basically I, again, just zigzagged along my edges and then I did my straight stitch and just made it a little wavy because I like a little character. So go ahead, get it ready and laid out. Now what I've done is um, I just kind of guessed about how big I wanted my my vase for my flower and you know like I said this is a rocket science this is just really just kind of free forming everything so I just kind of made sure I overlapped my bottom layer so that it looks like it's sitting on it and this particular one let me take a peek at it really quick here this particular vase is about eight inches and so you know you can use that as a guideline if you'd like I just went ahead turn this this way and I cut out a, a nice, I used this red fabric I had a scrap of, and I just kind of went with this one. And let's see, really quickly, see how close I was. That one is eight and an eighth, so that's <laughs> pretty darn close. And I'm gonna kind of move it over a little bit. So place it where you want it, because I'm gonna have three flowers. And so I'm thinking I want a flower here, a flower here, and maybe a flower over here. And so what I want to do now is I'm going to go ahead and um, set this on here and I'm going to go over to the ironing machine and I'm to the ironing board I should say and I'm going to press this down with my underwonder um, and it'll hold it in place and again if you don't have underwonder you can definitely use the glue stick to just hold it in place. So I'm going to go ahead and head over to there and I'll be right back. Okay so I've gone ahead and pressed that on there and now what we're going to do is with this piece of fabric right here, and with my outline, I used a um, a very complementing thread, a, a complementary color as thread. It's almost like a a khaki, so it very much matches the canvas, but it's got a little bit more of a yellow hue to it. I really liked that, and so I kind of kept that on these two on here, and I did that with this, but on here, on my flower and my vase, and I'll show you on this particular pillow. I want to use black thread. See how this this uh, you know straight stitching and everything is in black because it's kind of outlining the pattern, and so that's what I'm going to do. I, you know, I'm going to go over and switch my thread over, and get ready to do my flowers. Now, see if you can see here, I've got my stems that come up to here. So you're going to want to put your stems on before you put your flowers on so that your flowers can cover these stems. So they'll go slightly underneath there. So go over to your machine. And um, on this particular one, I'm just going to stitch around it. And then right here, I'm going to make this opening round, just like I did on this pillow. I want the opening round so that it looks like the stems are going inside the vase. And so if, you know, if you're having problems seeing that there, you can always take a pencil and, and draw it on there. But I just am going to simply do it with my machine in black thread and then when I'm done doing that I'm going to put my stems out to where I want them to go and so looking at my pillow right now I'm thinking I want a flower here and I'm just kind of roughly putting one here on with a pencil I want one there my stem will go there and I want another stem and um, remember stay inside your guidelines that you've marked on there and so I'm going to go with another flower here. And I think I'll do one hanging kind of over the edge, kind of down this way. So I've got my three flowers, and so I can see where I've got to actually bring them in and stitch them so that they show inside my vase. And I'm going to make that round. So go ahead and go over to your machine, and trace this in the black. Just free form it around there or else just, you know, this is pretty easy. You can just do a straight stitch on there. And I do a couple of stitches. I did about three passes. 
As you can see, I did three passes to make the lines darker and stand out more. Three or four passes. So go ahead, head over to your machine, do your outline on your vase and your stems. Don't take your stems out too far. You know, you just it's just where you drew them on there with the pencil, and you can barely see on here. But I've just sketched on there with the pencil lightly, and I've stayed within my guidelines. Because you know, remember, we put the 16 by 16 inch piece on here. And so we want to stay within those guidelines. So I'm going to go over and trace and do my stems, and we'll be right back. Okay, so here I am. I've gone ahead and I've traced around my vase, and I did that all in the black thread. And then I put my stems on. And see how I went down into the circle so it looks as if the stems are going into the vase? And I kind of know where I want my flowers, so I've got that set. Now what I did earlier, and my other pillow here, I don't have any leaves. But I kind of thought on this one I'd like to have some leaves. So what I'm going to do is I took a little scrap that I had, and I just cut them in the shapes of leaves. And I just, when I was cutting them, I put the underwonder in there at the same time um, so that I could put those on there. So let me go ahead and show you real quickly my flower pieces. And what I've done is I've picked out three different colors that I wanted for my flowers. And I have my large flower, and then my medium piece that goes on top of that, and my small piece. Paper. And, and I just drew, you know, a flower. I thought, how, about how big do I want this? And that was about my biggest size I wanted. So I did that. And then I've taken my underwonder, as you can see, my mesh here, and I've put it under each layer so that when I cut, my underwonder is coming out the same shape of my flower exactly so I don't have any hanging over to stick onto my iron because this stuff can be pretty sticky. So go ahead and cut your three large pieces and then I did the same with my medium piece and then my small pieces. Bigger. So there it is. I've cut out my flowers. So that's my large piece. And I like to save all my little underwonder scraps because this is wonderful for putting on small stems or leaves. So you really want to save that underwonder if you're going to use it again. These, garbage. Now I'm taking my medium piece again, the same thing. I've got three layers and I've put underwonder in between each layer. So I've got that. I'm going to pull out my underwonder because I love to use this, like I say, for all other little projects. Okay, really not enough left on that one to worry about saving. So now you've got your three flower pieces and that's how they're going to stack on each other in three different areas. And then, like I said, I cut me out some leaves and I put the underwonder under those as well. I think I'll put like a couple of leaves right here like they've fallen off and then maybe a couple of leaves on the stems as well. And then I'll kind of I'll go back and I'll trace it with the black. So the first thing you're going to want to do is start laying your uh, flowers out. And so let's go ahead and see what I've got here. And I kind of color coordinate mine beforehand so that I know what I'm working with. So I'm going to go ahead and pull off my my fabric plus my little underwonder there, and that is going to be my first flower right there. And so I'm going to go ahead and pin that in place. And I'm going to go with my second flower down here, and I want that about right there. Then I want this blue one up here. It's kind of a yummy bright color. So I want my colors mixed up a little bit. And I'm going ahead and pin that one on there. Now, what you can do at this point, a couple of options. You can go over and do your free form sewing around the edge of your around the edge of your flower. Or if you'd like, you can press the underwonder on and then press the second layer and the third layer and then go over and do it all at one time. And that's what I'm going to do. So I've got that on there, and now I'm taking my second layer. And I'm looking at it, and I'm going to kind of mix it up a bit so that my colors are, are fun. And I put that there, pull out my pin, stick it back in there. And let's see. 
Put that one on there. And then the blue one over here, I think that'll look really nice. So then I gotta get my little teeny small ones here. And my edge is just a little square, and I don't like that pointy edge. So before I put these on, I'm gonna kind of round that edge off. And I think I want this just a little dipped in right there. I want it a little bit more flowery shape, and I lost my shape a little bit. So go ahead and just trim with all of your layers, with your underwonder under there. And then pull them off. I think we'll go with that one there. Then I've got a pretty pink. And that one's black. I'm thinking that's just a little too harsh for <laughs> my design. So, never fear. We're going to grab a scrap of fabric. Let's see what I've got over here. Okay, I'm back. And I've got this little little piece on there still with my underwonder on it. So, I'm going to go ahead and use it for my pattern. And I'm just going to stick it on top of this little piece of orange uh, fabric that I found that I decided I want to use it. The black was just too high. Perfect. So we'll get rid of that. And there's my underwonder. We'll put that back underneath there. Line it back up. Perfect. Yeah, I like that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to my sewing machine. Well, first I'm going to go to the ironing board. And I'm going to just press these all down and adhere them to each other. So they're all nice and stuck together. And then I'll go over and I'll start doing a little... I'm going to just trace around this edge, trace around that edge, and then I'll trace and circle all the way in on the center of this one. Just like I did on these ones. As you can see, I've traced the edge and then on this one, I just started in the center and worked my way out and just did a little bit of a weedy, wobbly looking uh, stitch on there. So go ahead and do that for all three flowers. And like I said, I wanted to do some leaves and I want to do this while I'm at it at the same time now. So I think I want a couple of leaves that look like they've fallen down. So let me get my underwonder over here. came off so I'm gonna go ahead and just stick it right back on and I kind of want that one to overlap my blue down here so it looks like it's just fallen off and it's laying on the table of some sort right there so I want to go ahead and pin that one there and I'll go over and press that in a moment and then the other one here I think I want right there because I got a little leaf but we should go this way. Hmm. No. Just like that right there. Pin that one on. Then I got a couple more here. This is such a fun project to use up all your scraps. Extra. And I kind of like to work in odd numbers, so I've got four here. And so I'm thinking maybe just another little leaf down there. So it looks like two have fallen off of my flowers in my bouquet. So as you can see, I've got those pinned on there. So what I'm going to do is I'll trace around these, put a little veining in them. I'll attach them here, trace around it, put a little bit of veining just so it looks like it's attached, and then go ahead and take your machine and trace around these and then circle into the center. So go ahead and take a minute and get that done and we'll move on to the next step. 
Alrighty, I'm back from the machine, and as you can see, let's go ahead and turn it around. I've gone ahead and I've traced all my little flowers, did my little circle in the center, put my leaves on, did some veining in the leaves. I think that's really sweet. Um, that's it. Basically, you're done. <laughs> all you have to do now is attach the front to the back. Um, at this point, you can write something down here if you want it, with your freeform sewing. I don't know, um, you know, freeform sewing is just basically pressing your feed dog so that they will drop and then setting your stitch length to about two and just go ahead and move the, the fabric and what you'll find with this canvas is it free forms sews so well because of its thickness and with the underwonder it holds this these uh, these little flowers or the applique on there so well that you don't have to worry about that, uh, you know, lifting up while you're you're sewing. And again, like I say, you can do it with the glue stick, but I really highly recommend the underwonder because it just works so much better adhering the whole thing together, and it helps to keep the edges from fraying too badly on your applique pieces. Um, so what at this point, what you're going to do is, like I say, you can come back and put something right here. You know what? I think I might come back here and put the word sweet right there. I'm going to put the word sweet. Um, or lovely, maybe something. I think lovely. I think lovely works good. And so um, I'll go ahead and I'll free form that in there. Like I say, at this point, you don't have to do that. You can just go ahead and leave it the way it is. But what we want to do now is, as you can see on this particular pillow, we have a, like a little underlying uh, fabric here. And that is basically a piece of fabric that I cut out and I cut them 21 inches long, 21 inches long by two and a half inches wide. And I did four of those because what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this aside for now and I'm going to bring my back over here. Oh, I've got a piece of scrap there. And remember how I pressed these down. And so what happens here is this piece is the back and here's your front. And you can lay that on there like that. But I, like on this one here, on my other one, I want to see some, a little fabric just hanging out. And that's what these are for. And these will measure, like I said, 21 inches. And I'm just going to sew them on this piece right here. And this is my back. And what I do is I like to sew it where I've pressed this down. So it gives me a nice clean finish on there. And I sew it on before I put them together. So what I'll do is I'll put one there. And remember, I want, because there's a right and a wrong side to this fabric, um, you know, I want the right side facing up, and this is the back, because when I place this on here, I want to be able to see that pretty bright green pattern. I don't want to see the faded part, the wrong side. So just to keep that in mind, to make sure you have that going up on the right way. Now some fabrics that are um, like this particular fabric that I used on the first pillow, it was aligned and in the, the back side and the underside, the front side and the underside look the same. They're so very close together you can't tell a right or a wrong side. So that was kind of helpful with that one. But this one, just go ahead and make sure that you put this up so that your fabric color is up. And then what I want to do is I'm going to put this side on and I'm just kind of roughly guessing it's hanging over a little bit. You know, just kind of make your overhang a little bit even because it only has to be as wide as this piece going on. And let's go ahead and bring this up just a titch. Look at this one down here. Oh yeah. And anything extra you'll just snip off. We're going to go like that. And this one's going to go right here. Perfect. And it's just going over that quarter of an inch where we've laid that down. Now what I like to do is go ahead and just pin this in place real quickly. And what I'll do is I'll stitch, straight stitch this on all the way around here. And then again, I'm going to come back on the outside edge and I'm going to zigzag all around this edge so that this doesn't, the fray doesn't come undone, but it still gives it a little bit of uh, organic looking flower on there. Oops, I didn't get this one all the way out. There we go. And 
And what I'll do is when I come to this part, I'll just stitch down. And that's so you'll see a little stitch mark across here. Kind of like with this one, you see how I've got a little square in the corner? And that's okay, just anything to, you know, to, it, it's just to hold it together. So go ahead and stitch this part on. And then once that's stitched on to where the quarter of an inch is folded over, then come back and just zigzag on the outside edge and then give it a straight stitch, a little bit wavy, just like we did before. And then we'll come back and I'll show you where to go from there. I had just one more little thing I wanted to tell you. Once you get this all pinned on, and like I said, you can just nip off this extra, but you'll want to go back with your contrasting thread now. You want it to be the complementary one. I'm going to go back to the khaki. I don't want the black out here because I don't want it to stand out so much. I want my flowers to pop, not my edging as much. So go ahead and when you go over to your machine, change back to your khaki thread or your white thread, the one that is not so outstanding so that you don't have such a bold edging on there. That's my preference. If you want the bold edging, go ahead, but just wanted to give you that little side note. Okay, so what I've done, look on this side. This is the back side. This is the back of the pillow. This is with the wrong side of the fabric to make sure you're <laughs> all on the correct side here. Let me just pull out a couple of threads I got mixed in there. Got some black thread mixed in there. All right, so what I did is I just went ahead and sewed that on there on that little quarter of an inch seam. So it sewed that little seam down and it attached my green. Now you look on this side, this is my right side, and see I've got a little extra over here and up here, and all I'm gonna do is just snip those. That's what's so wonderful about this project, you know? Um, it, there's just no wrong way to do it, really, except for making sure you get your, right, your fabric right side up. Looks like I got a little wrinkle there. What I like to do, and I'll just kind of share that with you, is, is I like to press all of my stitching. It sets my stitching in and it gives me a nice level uh, piece of, of fabric to work with. So this one's all pressed down and ready to go. Now I'm going to show you how we're going to put it together. Here's our top part. And remember we've got wrong side showing and you can feel underneath there where your pillow is setting and it should be setting on those pencil marks that you set earlier that are just barely there. You can possibly see this. So now we're getting some overhang. See this overhang? So this is going to be showing outside the pillow. And what you're going to do, let me just kind of show it to you this way, is you are going to go ahead and stitch again right on top of this. And at this point I like to zigzag because I just like a little bit of decorative stitch. I zigzag and then again I come back with a straight stitch that's wavy. But I'm only going to do it on the three sides and then into about right here because I need this open to insert my pillow on the other side. So flip this back over and kind of make sure you've got it right where you want it. You can fill those corners underneath there because they're big and bulky. And just look at your trim, make sure it's where you want. And because you can fill that in there, you can see where you're going to have to sew that and it's going to show up again. You're going to have another straight line right along here. It's going to look really cute. So just filling that, I am going to go ahead and pin it right there. put it in placement. Okay, and I'm just going to flip it over because I know I've got it right where I want it. Okay, and from here, pin it into place and you've got your previous stitch line on there, your straight stitch where you stitched your green fabric on and that's, the, that's your guideline. That's where you're going to stitch over it again but with a zigzag maybe right next to it or right over top of it, however you like. So go ahead and pin that on there. Again, remember, I like to, here's the top of my pillow up here, and I want to put my insert down here at the bottom. So this is where I'll sew it to, just to right here, and leave that opening right there so I can stuff my pillow in. So I'm going to kind of just mark a pin right here, 
on the other side because I can feel the bump. There it is. So I know I only got to go there and there. Flip that back over. I know I'm only going to go into there. And this only takes a couple of little pins because it's just laying flat on there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here, zigzag all the way around to here, and then I will take it and insert my pillow. So let's go ahead and just do your zigzag around here. Don't worry about the front part. Just leave it on this side and zigzag it. Okay, we're back. And what I've done is I have gone ahead, let me trim this edge, I missed it. I've gone ahead and sewn all the way around this edge right here. I've zigzagged all the way around there. And when you flip it over, you can see the zigzag on this side. So it kind of frames in what you've already got on there. It looks like I got a little bit of a, a knot there in my fabric, in my sewing thread, but it doesn't matter. I think it looks cute. And then I did go ahead and put the word bloom on there. Um, so that that was kind of, you know, just an afterthought, but I, um, just to kind of show you that. So what I've done is I've left the bottom open. And what we're going to do is we're going to insert our pillow. All right, this is the pillow we're going to insert. I'm going to take off this tag that says under the pen play of law. I'm going to go to jail if I take it off, but it's coming off. And what I do is I kind of squeeze my pillow in half, and this has a little zipper. So I make sure that's at the bottom, and I'm going to squeeze my pillow in half, give it a little squeeze, and I'm going to feed it through here with my hand, just feeding it in there until I get all the way to the tip top, and then I just let go, and it will fill in right where we need it to. Shake it down, get it right where we want it. Oh, looks great. I'm loving that. Look at that, how cute that is. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to stitch this bottom shut. And I'll tell you how to do that. What you're going to do is push that pillow in there really good. Push it in there real good. And then remember, you've got your thick line right here. And you're just going to get your zipper foot. And what I like to do is I just press this down just like I'm doing here on my sewing machine. I line this up just like it is here. This is where that zigzag line is. And so I know this is where my thick over on this end is. And all I'm going to do is stitch along there. Just pull it tight. And using my zipper foot, I just stitch right along that edge and close it up. And I'll show you from this side. It might be a little easier. See, there's my single stitch. Here's my zigzag over here. So I need to zigzag this shut. And so all I do is line up those ends on that side. And you can pin it if you want. Because you're just pinning on that thick part right there. There's that zigzag on the other side. And you are going to come back on this side with your zipper foot. Um, you know, if and do a straight stitch, and then after you get the straight stitch on with the zipper foot, take it off, put on your regular foot, and zigzag it just so it'll match the other side. Yep, just looking at that, and so I'm going to pull that. So I'm going to run over and sew this really quick on the machine, and I'll be right back. Alrighty, so what I've done is I went ahead and closed off the bottom of my pillow right there so it's all enclosed and the pillow is completely finished. Now that we've got it all done what you can do is just go back and start pulling out some of your fabric you know your your phrase so that you don't have a lot of them just hanging off on your your pillow. I just kinda like to clean it up make it a little bit neater just give it a pull and whatever comes out just kinda snip it off and do that along everywhere you've got a raw edge so that you don't have any funny looking strings. And you can even, if you wanted, let's go ahead and pull that one out, is take your zigzag scissors right here and zigzag this edge right here if you wanted, just to kind of crimp it a little bit. 
give it a little character if you want to go ahead and do that you can you know um, I think I'm just going to go ahead and let mine fray and trim off what I can trim off I just kind of give it a pull and anywhere there's an extra piece that we can pull out just trim it off a little bit to make it look a little neater and cleaned up and there is our pillow isn't that great okay here we are all done with our beautiful little bloom pillow I think it turned out perfect I love the vase color being the red on there it's so nice and the canvas is so much fun to sew on this is a really great project to make some gifts and to be able to give them to friends and family I really appreciate you coming by the studio this evening and I hope you enjoyed this project